doctors of Reddit, what's the biggest case of faking it you've ever seen? Taking trauma call during surgery residency. Had a prisoner come in after a fight and claimed he couldn't move or feel his legs. All the CT scans and MRIs were normal, but we would shield his legs so he couldn't see them and poke them with needles and other sharp objects with enough force to cause pain. He never flinched or moved his legs at all. He was diagnosed with SCIWORA, spinal cord injury without radiographic abnormality. He stayed in the hospital for a week, no improvement, always had one guard with him. One night they were down in the lobby watching some television, but the guard needed to use the restroom. The patient said, where could I possibly go? I'm paralyzed. Guard left him alone for two minutes. Patient last seen sprinting down the road, naked butt cheeks flapping in the breeze, making it to a city four hours away by car before he was caught again. I have never seen anyone fake it so well, truly playing the long con. Why? Question stands for both faking it and his daring escape. The faking it was for the escape. The escape is because, as I understand it, prison sucks. Patient was convinced she had a melanoma and needed a biopsy and would need to be on workers' comp. I told her it looked like ink from a marker. She demanded a biopsy. I wiped the area off with an alcohol swab and showed her the ink and that there was no spot on her skin anymore. She stormed out threatening to sue. I'm glad I cured her melanoma. I'm glad I cured her melanoma. But, but, she didn't want to be cured, you charlatan. Real life miracle worker here. Had a patient come in for a fall who now couldn't move their legs at all. Did a bunch of tests, didn't find anything. The patient was not at all faced by suddenly being paralyzed, which was the first red flag. Didn't really believe anything was wrong, but the patient was still not moving their legs. My options are to admit for a huge workup or get them to walk. So I updated them saying everything is fine, tests are negative, you can go home. Patient gets up, gets dressed, and walks out without a word. So, I update them saying everything is fine, tests are negative, you can go home, patient gets up, gets dressed, and walks out without a word. We had a patient faking a seizure, so my supervisor told one of us to get the brain needle. The patient made a miraculous and swift recovery without it. That's the best part about most of these stories, when they make up some form of fake machine so that the patient stops faking, cracks me up every time. Fake problems require fake solutions. Young 18 to 20 woman went running into small rural hospital ER pretending to have abdominal pain. Police officer had tagged her going 40 kilometers over the limit, which was stunt driving as per the new law in Ontario, impound and license suspension automatic. Cop followed her into ER and apparently said he'd be waiting for her when she left. Locum staff, such as I, were housed at a small B&B about 15 minutes away, and the ER had pre-printed order sets to be done before we arrived. When I arrived, she flat out admitted she just came in because she freaked out and didn't stop. I told her we'd give her 45 minutes to call her parents' family before I booted her. Except BHCG came back positive and the subsequent ultrasound came back showing extremely early ectopic. Officer figures out something is up when he hears air ambulance call come in over radio. She was completely asymptomatic and just worked out that she dodged both charges and a life-threatening issue by accident. It was definitely a wow moment. My brother was an EMT for two years and he told me this. People will try to use the ambulance as a means for transportation from Fulton to Oswego because the hospital is in Oswego, by faking seizures. Sometimes when the head EMT guy was feeling fun and knew that the person was faking, he'd say something like, man, it's weird that he's having seizures but not peeing himself. Apparently, the person would kind of snap out of it for a second, weigh up the repercussions, and either pee themselves or stop faking. I thought that was hilarious. We had a family calling for a medicab, a cab paid for by the income-based insurance from somewhere out in the sticks to our ER in a college town. Every few weeks or so, the mom would be seen for some ailment or the other, and the rest of the family would go to Walmart, go to the mall, do all their in-town errands. 
She was basically faking an emergency illness every few weeks so they wouldn't have to pay for a cab to get their shopping done. Working at the pharmacy, we saw a guy come in to try and get a refill on some pain meds that had no refill. After pleading that his ear really hurt, we told him again we couldn't refill it. One of the other employees saw his step into a side hallway and take a pencil and jam it forcefully into his ear, repeatedly, drawing blood. He calmly left and went to the ER. He came back a few hours later with a prescription for pain meds. It amazes me that people will risk permanent deafness for a fix. Could a patient be denied pain meds for intentionally harming themselves to get them? I'm just wondering if that behavior can be countered with refusal of meds. Whenever we had kids, usually teenagers, playing up their symptoms to extend their hospital stay, we would order them into a healthy lifestyle. Lights out at 9, no screen time for 2 hours before bedtime, healthy diet, chock full of fruits and vegetables, screen time limits, minimum number of laps around the unit per day to get in their exercise. They got better so much faster with our healthy lifestyle tips. As a sick teenager, I never understood why other teenagers on the unit play things up to stay longer. I'm always begging to leave as soon as I possibly can. This patient comes in for back pain with weakness of the legs. Gets a full workup with MRI, standard blood work, and then some immunological things to look for, stuff like myasthenia gravis. No neurological or immunological explanation for the weakness. The patient is seen by physical therapy and they are of the opinion that the patient is holding back intentionally. Go to see the patient at the end of the day and prep them for discharge. The patient is infuriated that they're being discharged, yelling and screaming about how they aren't better, how they're disappointed in the institution, blah blah blah. They said one particular thing that still clearly stands out three to four years later. I can't believe you're sending me home already. I haven't even told my family I'm here. And now you're going to send me home before they even had the chance to see me? My attending and I leave the room to arrange things with the nurses. We go back in and the patient is out of bed and standing up in the middle of the room. Miraculously, the patient is able to walk with zero assistance when they had so much difficulty with any assistance over the previous two days. At that point, they were enraged. Was enraged, we went into the room without knocking. They were discharged home after a conversation regarding abuse of medical services. Was the patient's goal to have their family see them in the hospital? Had a patient when I was an intern feigning blindness. She would constantly be playing on her smartphone, only furiously trying to hide it when someone from the care team came into her room. The best was when my attending one day strolled past her room and threw his hand up in a highly exaggerated hello wave. She started to throw her arm up too, but caught herself halfway through, then threw her hand back into her lap and pretended to be staring off into nothing. A friend of mine likes to stick out her hand for a handshake when people come in feigning blindness. Nearly all of them instinctively meet her handshake. It's great to watch. How often does that happen? What is the patient trying to achieve? When people come in feigning blindness, yeah, seriously. Well, your blindness is pretty serious. I'm going to start you off with a number 360 quantity 80 milligram of oxycodone. Noise of perforation ripping from prescription pad. I want you to take three every eight hours. Nurse from an ophthalmologist here had a 21-year-old new patient claiming to be completely blind from a sudden and severe glaucoma diagnosis from a previous unknown doctor. Would feel around while walking, tried to keep eyes rolled back into his head, the whole nine yards. He said he is a famous YouTube rapper that is now unable to make videos or earn a living. I exclaimed to have heard of him before and very excitedly asked him to search and show me his YouTube channel on my phone so that I could subscribe. He took my phone out of my hand and effortlessly found the YouTube app and typed away in the search bar. Oh, and of course, his eyes were back to normal and focused. I am amazed he didn't ask for a discount or to have a free checkup for some exposure. He was Medicaid, so it was free. But yeah, he did ask for a letter for his parole officer that he could use marijuana to treat his glaucoma. Bummer, he did not have glaucoma and medicinal marijuana is illegal in the state of Texas. One time, my roommate, who is an ICU nurse, came to see one of my indoor soccer games. During the game, a player and the other team went down hurt and started screaming in pain and swearing and rolling around while holding his ankle before he was eventually helped off the field. 
He then limped over to where the fans sat and watched the rest of the game, brooding in silence before he left early. After the game, my roommate told me he was going to go over and see if there was anything he could do to help, until he saw the guy was limping on the wrong leg. I once saw a patient who had been faking paralysis of the legs for years, used a wheelchair, never walked, etc. Old records showed extensive imaging, neurology consults, and other tests that proved that the patient had full function of all extremities. Family, friends were just going along with it, not sure if it was really conversion disorder or if the patient had some secondary gain issue. That's so baffling. I'm a part-time wheelchair user and I don't know why anyone would choose to make the world more inaccessible to themselves. Not a doctor, but am a UK-based midwife. Had a patient who had been in and out of hospital throughout her pregnancy with episodes of heavy bleeding. This was her sixth baby, so she was a fairly well-known patient in our unit. The issue was, no one had ever seen her actively bleeding. She'd call saying that she had bled down the toilet but flushed it, and all the examinations we did came back completely normal, with mostly no evidence of any bleed whatsoever. On occasions during speculum examinations, we'd see the smallest amount of blood. I was caring for her during a shift where she yet again called to say she was bleeding, walked into her room and found her jabbing around her vagina with a sharp object to make herself bleed. She had been doing it the entire pregnancy. The reason she gave? Because she had five noisy children at home, needed some rest, and knew wouldn't admit her to hospital if it wasn't for a good reason. She would do it anytime her being discharged home was mentioned. We ended up having to complete a perinatal mental health referral and consult with our safeguarding midwives as she was putting herself and baby at risk of serious harm. Imagine being so exhausted with your family that you feel the need to stab yourself in the vagina. Yikes. I hope that woman found the help she needed. My cousin got glasses. Her seven-year-old little sister also wanted glasses because she thought it was so cool to wear them. So she started telling her teacher she couldn't read what was on the chalkboard. And she'd squint at home and go incredibly close to the TV to watch things because she said she couldn't see things clearly. Her parents got worried and took her to the doctor. She read everything wrong on the vision test. Everyone seemed convinced that she needed glasses. But the doctor was a little concerned because the tests indicated she needed really thick glasses. And usually, that wasn't the case unless there was a family history of vision issues. Her parents both had 20-20 vision and her sister only had astigmatism. They all realized she was faking it. So, the doctor told her parents in front of her that she'd need some pretty intense eye surgery so she'd be able to see without glasses. They even wheeled in a machine to make it convincing to say they could do the surgery right then and there. She freaked out, confessed to faking it all and started to cry. She got grounded for a while. I wanted glasses as a small child too, went to the ophthalmologist, purposely misread all the charts. The doctor pulled a chair of glasses out from a drawer. I put them on, read all the lines perfectly. Turns out they were fake glasses for just this situation. Frames with glass, not prescription lens. Luckily, my parents didn't punish me, just stressed how important it is not to lie and let me learn my lesson from being embarrassed at being caught in the lie. When I was a medical student, I worked in the pediatric side of the emergency room and we would give popsicles to all the kids. One afternoon, an 8-year-old came in with his father and I asked what was wrong. The kid couldn't remember what he complained about to his dad and the dad couldn't remember why he brought his kid in. The kid's mom was a nurse. She was working at another hospital at the time, and she was the one who would keep track of these things. Anyway, after a few minutes trying to figure out what was going on, the kid asked, So, can I have my popsicle now? The kid was 100% healthy. Unfortunately, we reinforced bad behavior and both the kid and the dad subsequently left with popsicles. When I was in preschool, I got a ribbon for good behavior. For some unknown reason, idiotic three-year-old me decided to stick the safety pin from the ribbon up my nose and I couldn't get it out. Neither could my parents. So off to the pediatrician's office. Since it was nearby, my dad bundled me up, put me in the stroller, and walked there. Since it was winter, the cold air ended up opening up my nostrils and the safety pin came out when we got to the clinic. Nevertheless, they offered a coupon for ice cream and my dad was having none of it. No way were they rewarding my stupidity. Thank you.